Hey, what's up, Tag? Welcome back. We're still in March. We're still still wearing green. We're still talking about St. Patrick's Day. I'm glad you're back. Hopefully you were able to be with us last week when we talked about St. Patrick's Day part one. We were looking at being bitter or better. This week we're going to do a part two of that. So if you haven't watched it, watch this. And then you can go back and watch that. We can do like they do the movies when you do them out of order. You get the last one first and then they go back and do prequels and all that other stuff. Don't worry about it. No problem. Welcome back to the channel, though. I'm glad that you are here taking this time so that we can get with our tag friends and find out what God has for us. That's why we call it Tag Time. So don't forget to, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like or subscribe to the channel. Definitely helps our channel grow, which means it'll pop up in the list as people are looking for different things. And so it will help the channel out so that other people can also hear God's word because that's the goal. We want people to find out who God is, what he's saying. More people will join us. So don't forget that if you're watching YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, leave me a comment. Let me know what's up. Say, hey, we'd love to see you in the comments because I don't see a whole bunch of you at church. We're in church. We're in Burks Elementary still every Sunday. So if you have an opportunity at 1030, come on through to church. I would love to see you. I don't get to see my peoples, my crew, my tag group anymore. So come on through very soon. Uh, we're going to start announcing um, a little day out or lunch hangout that we're going to set up so that we can get together. We can hang out, have a good time and enjoy some food. All that's coming up. So to make sure that you don't forget when that comes up, I need you to get your phone out if you have a cell phone. Ask your parents if you don't, if you can use theirs, get on the tag list because there I send out a few updates during the week. I send out an encouragement. I send out a reminder about something we talked about. I'll send out uh, the YouTube link to this video. So if you want to get that, sign up, just send the word tag to the phone number for our church is 713. What's our text number? Can't call it. Anyway, send the word tag, T-A-G-G, -G, to the phone number, 713-903-8533. If you didn't get that, rewind it, go backwards a little bit. Send the word tag there. You'll be automatically put on that list and you'll get a few updates from me. I'd appreciate it. Let's get into the word today. Last week we were talking about who St. Patrick was. So like I said, if you didn't see that video, you need to go watch it because it gives us a little bit of a setup. But we did talk about how Patrick, before he was a saint, he was a teenager. Uh, he was a British Roman citizen or he was Roman, Roman citizen in Britain because Rome had like all but taken over the whole world back in history. Uh, his life story takes place back in the 400s. And he celebrated today because of good decisions, choices, and who he was in the past. So as always, when it comes to uh, holidays and different things like that, we like to figure out, should I celebrate this as a believer? Should I be involved with this as a Christian? And we determine, yes, yes, we want to celebrate St. Patrick because he was an example of a believer. He was an example of a person who didn't allow the situations in his life to determine the outcome of his life. He didn't allow the, the bad things to uh, determine who he was going to be or how he was going to live. And so we found out he was a teenager. He was abducted. He was thrown into slavery. He escaped slavery. He got back home and he believed the guy gave him a vision to go back where he was enslaved. Like that is almost mind boggling and just out cold and crazy. God wanted him to go back to the place where he was enslaved. If I was ever enslaved, at, you know, in, in my today's mindset, I'd want to go back to where I was enslaved. But I go back with a whole bunch of small arms and cartridges, if you know what that is. I'd be going back to blaze people, to cause havoc, to wreak damage on people's lives because, you know, I would be angry, I think, right now. But as we learn from the lesson of Patrick, that's not how we should be. And that's not what God wants us to do. God called him back into that place and he answered that call. And he spent the rest of his life there sharing the love and the word of God. And it made a huge impact throughout history. And so that's why he celebrated today. So we want to pick up and, and uh, last week we were talking about how we don't want to allow negative situations in our life to make us bitter, 
but we can use those negative situations to help us be better, to overcome the odds, to do whatever it is that we have to do. And we can live a better life. That's what we're all about, living a better life. So this week, what I want to talk about is following his path. All right, we're going to have a capital H for his, because we're not talking about Patrick. We're not talking about following Patrick's path. We want to learn from his example, follow his example, but we want to follow his path. We're talking about God. God is the his. And so we're looking today at follow his path. It was St. Patrick's Day, part two. So again, uh, if we look at what St. Patrick did or just Patrick at the time, because he wasn't canonized or made a saint. Actually, I don't think he was ever actually canonized. He was just called St. Patrick, but you have to get into the Catholic Church and Catholicism to figure all that out, which I am not. So St. Patrick, when he was Patrick, he had that that terrible thing happen to him. And as always, when we have things happen to us, we have choices to make. We have to decide, is this going to determine who I am? There are people, like there was a, there's a, a new show, like I was a victim of a crime or I survived a crime or something like that. And people go through and relive situations. Then they talk about them on TV. Lots of people have experienced lots of things. All right. And if we allow the things we experience to determine how we're going to respond to life's events from that point forward, we'll become what they call jaded. This weirdo crazy chick a long time ago made a song about a bag lady. And the song was about this this bag lady and, and this lady having baggage And the concept of having baggage is, you know, bad thing happens in the past. We take something negative from that. We put it in a bag and we carry that bag. And that bag gets heavy. Over time, it gets heavier and heavier because we're adding more negative experiences. And when we have a negative experience and we allow that experience to make us negative, we create more negative experiences. And we add on negativity and add on negativity And we become more and more hateful, more and more spiteful, more and more bitter. And so we don't want to allow bitterness to creep into our hearts. As we looked last week in Hebrews chapter 12, we don't want to allow that bitterness to come into our heart because it's going to spring up. It's going to grow. We don't, you don't, you start with a little bit of bitterness, but you don't end up with a little bit of bitterness because it grows and morphs and monasticizes, if you know what that means. So we want to deal with bitterness and get it out. The aspect that we want to focus in on Patrick's story today is what he decided to do with his life after the bad event. So we're done with the bad event. We're not talking about the bad event. Now, this is something that we want to do following his path. This is something that we want to do whether or not we ever experience some great negative thing in our lives. Some of us will live our lives with no big abstract negative things. Some people, some people have terrible things that have happened to them in the past. Terrible things happen with their parents or with family members or things they saw when they were little. Lots of people have lots of terrible things that happened to them. But there are also probably a lot of people who don't have really bad things happen to them. Don't have diseases. Don't have experience with people dying, don't have great experiences of poverty and lack. Whether or not we've had those experiences, we still want to do this thing, which is why I said we're done with the bad part. So whether or not life is good or bad, whether we feel good or don't feel good, we need to follow his path. All right. That's what I want in your mind today. In my mind today, we're thinking about talking about, we're going to live our life from this point forward to follow his path. Whose path? talking about God's path. And it's very important. So what Patrick did when he got back home, remember we said he had a dream where God was calling him back to the place that that had treated him bad. He He called him to be a missionary. And so Patrick had a decision to make. Am I going to follow what God wants me to do? Or, 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 or am I going to do what I want to do. There's a few scriptures that I want to look at to help us get this point, or excuse me, get this point. Uh, The first one is going to be in Proverbs. 
First one's going to be in Proverbs. It's going to be in the Old Testament. All right. So I want you to turn there, swipe there, tap there, go to Proverbs. It's right after Psalms, really close to the middle of the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 37. Excuse me. We're looking at Psalm. We're not looking at Proverbs. Not looking at Proverbs. Go to Psalm, which is really close. If you got the Proverbs, Psalm is the book before it. Go to Psalm 37. Because I was like, Proverbs doesn't have 37 chapters. Anyway, we're going to Psalm 37. Look at stanza 23. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good, this is what we're talking about. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, well, if you're on this planet, God has ordered your steps. The question is whether or not we will follow those steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That means there's a process. That means there's a path. That means there is a a decision that we have to make. Am I going to take this path or not? Sometimes if you've ever been hiking, uh, you get to a point where the path you're on leads to another path this way or a path that way. Or you might be at an intersection where there's three paths that that kick off from that point and you got to decide which path am I going to take? Well, I'm telling you right now, you, God has ordered your steps and there is a specific path that he wants you to take that you are in control of whether or not you're going to take it. Now, right now, your parents are in control of a, a lot of your steps. They're in control of a lot of your life. But as you get older, You'll be more and more in charge of your own path. And even now, God has a path that he wants you to take within the parameters of your parents leading and guiding. So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he, the man, delighteth in his God's way. So we're talking about following his path. The good man is the man that delights in the way that God has laid out for him. And so that's what we see that Patrick did. Patrick said, okay, God wants me to go and teach these people about Jesus. Ooh, that could be difficult. You know, I just got back home a few years ago. I like being at home. I don't want to leave. I was gone for six years. Can't you leave me somewhere here, Lord? No, that wasn't the path that God had for Patrick. In order for you to be most fulfilled in life, you have to must, got to, or gots to follow the path that God has for you in order to be most fulfilled. Being rich won't cause you to be most fulfilled. Being famous won't cause you to be most fulfilled. Being successful in whatever area or job you want, marrying whoever you think you want to marry, none of those things will help you be most fulfilled. The only way you can be most fulfilled and absolutely fulfilled in this life is to follow God's plan because he created you for that plan. And there's no way to be fully fulfilled if we don't do it his way. So we wanna get with God. We wanna study God's word. We wanna spend time in prayer so that he can show us that path. Now he's probably not gonna show us the whole path today. He's not gonna show you the rest of your life between now and the time you die today. But he's gonna show you these steps and he wants you to take those steps. Whether when it comes to deciding where you're going to go to college, what you're going to study, who you're going to marry, where you're going to live, all those things should be found in the plan of God. And as a believer, you should seek his advice before you make a decision. Let's go to the New Testament. I want to look at Luke chapter 9. Real quick, we're almost done. Hang in there. I'm glad that you're here. It's just a few more minutes and we will shut this down. I really can't wait to see your face again. All right. Church, Burks, 1030. We don't have our youth service yet. We'll be getting back to it soon in Jesus' name. Come on through. Say what's up so we can see your wonderful, lovely face. Luke chapter 9. Turn, tap, swipe over there. Look at verse number 23. Scroll up or down. Swipe left or right so you can get to Luke chapter 9, verse 23. It says, he, talking about Jesus, said to them all, If any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If we are going to be followers, disciples, people of Christ, we have to deny ourselves. That means that we deny the we wants. We want to work this job. We want to go to this school. We want to have 
this type of life. Well, we have to deny that and we have to follow him. So we have to follow those paths and those steps that he laid out. Now, let me give you a great secret. God is not going to lead you in a place that's going to be torturous for you. God doesn't lead us to hell. He leads us to heaven. And the things that he have, has for us in our lives, there might be difficult parts. There might be things that we don't, don't look good right now. But if you will follow his path, I promise you, it'll lead to heaven on earth where you'll be most fulfilled. And then when your time on this earth is done, it'll lead to heaven in heaven. And that's where we really want to be. That's what I'm talking about. That's where I want to go. So I want to encourage you today. I want to beg you today, follow his path. Wherever it leads, whatever it takes, it will be worth it. That's it, my friends. I'm out of here, Tag. You're it.